Abraham's wife, Sarah, thought herself too advanced in age to bear a child, so she encouraged Abraham to have a child with her handmaiden Hagar, so that Abraham's name could be carried forward. But later on the Lord did bless Abraham and Sarah with a son. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born. The day Isaac was weaned, he threw a big feast for him, and Sarah saw the son of Hagar, Ishmael, mocking Isaac. So she said to Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman, Ishmael, would not be heir with her son Isaac. And Abraham was grieved because he felt responsible for both the boys. And God said unto Abraham, Don't be grieved. Hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall I seed be called. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. Then it says she went and sat about a bowshot away, so she didn't have to watch the child suffer as he died of thirst. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the bottle with water, and gave the lad drink. Muslims have actually been taught that the well of water referenced in verse 19 above is the well of Zamzam in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. That would mean that between verse 14, when they were sent away, and verse 15, where the water ran out, Hagar and Ishmael would have had to travel across 1,200 kilometers of at that time uninhabited, unexplored, uncharted desert on a single skin of water only to arrive at one of the harshest environments that even Arabia has to offer. In fact, all of the historians and geographers from several centuries B.C. and on to into the Christian era who wrote about the area where Mecca was eventually built in the 4th century A.D. described the area as being uninhabitable. Please see the video, History of Mecca, for more on that subject. So are we to believe that Hagar and Ishmael wandered from Beersheba to Mecca, 1,200 kilometers. This is 750 kilometers. The better part of a 1,000 years before a caravan route was ever established along the Red Sea. Here's a sample Islamic site on the matter. Abraham took Hagar and her son Ishmael to a place near the Kaaba, he left them under a tree at the site of Zamzam. No one lived in Mecca back then, yet Abraham made them sit there, leaving them with some dates and a small skin of water. Thereafter he set out towards home. So then apparently Abraham, Hagar, and Ishmael walked across 1,200 kilometers of unknown desert. Abraham dropped them off under a tree in what eventually became Mecca, and then Abraham set out on his 1200 kilometer walk back home. Any things seem a bit peculiar about that picture? Muslims are also taught that Ishmael was Abraham's only son at the time. Why would Abraham abandon his only son? Is Abraham supposed to have hung around Mecca until Ishmael got old enough to help him build the Kaaba? Or did he walk back home and then walk the 1200 kilometers back to Mecca? Did Sarah wander to Mecca so that she and Abraham could conceive their son Isaac? It's obvious how preposterously untenable the whole ridiculous story is on so many levels as created in Islam. We know from scripture that Ishmael dwelt in the wilderness of Paran. This is the northern Red Sea. This is the Gulf of Aqaba. Here's the wilderness of Paran. Mount Paran is in Jordan up about here. This is the traditional location of Mount Sinai, and this is a new location where it's some believe it to be. Here's a photograph of the wilderness of Paran and of Mount Paran in what is today Jordan. Here's a satellite location map. Here's the Gulf of Aqaba, Mount Paran, about 100 kilometers due north of that location of Mount Sinai.
and he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. Are we to believe that Hagar traveled back the 1,200 kilometers through the desert from Mecca to Egypt, and then back again with Ishmael's wife? Is this where she went? From Mecca up to Egypt and back to Mecca? Thousand kilometers? Or did she go from the wilderness of Paran to Egypt and back? The answer is obvious. Of course, that's not the case because the historical and scriptural evidence suggests that the twelve tribes had developed from Ishmael's sons inhabited the northern Sinai Peninsula, the wilderness of Paran, and surrounding area. That's here. And eventually migrated up into the Fertile Crescent. We also know that Ishmael wasn't very far away because he was available to attend his father Abraham's burial near Hebron, and his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah. So we're to believe that Ishmael traveled from Mecca all the way up to Hebron, 1,200 kilometers, in time to attend a funeral better part of a thousand years before the caravan route was ever established here along the Red Sea? Amazingly, in order to resolve the preposterous suggestion that Abraham or Ishmael were ever at the place where Mecca was eventually built in the 4th century AD, the 1200 kilometers from where Abraham actually lived, the most quoted 8th century Islamic tradition creator, Ibn Ishaq, originated the idea that Abraham commuted back and forth to visit Ishmael in Mecca on the winged camel or Barak. He also invoked this mythical animal to explain how Ishmael was able to attend Abraham's funeral 1,200 miles from Mecca. In the Zoroastrian scriptures, a fabled winged camel was used by their mythical prophet to travel to and from the place where their immortal ancestors were supposed to have dwelt. Muhammad also credited a similar creature for transporting him on an overnight journey covering the 1,200 kilometers to Jerusalem, then to heaven and back to Mecca by morning. Please visit the Muhammad's Night Journey video for more on that extremely important subject in Islam. The biggest reason we know that neither Abraham nor Ishmael visited Mecca is because Mecca did not exist before immigrants from Yemen built it in the 4th century AD and built their Kaaba for Arabian star family worship in the early 5th century, of which their moon god stone idol Muslims still bow toward today. Please see the history of Mecca and Mecca the Kaaba and black stone videos. To our Muslim friends, will you continue to reject the 1600 year record of God to mankind that we can see from the above as a perfect geographical and historical fit? Or will he continue to follow Muhammad's standalone Antichrist 7th century religion and the flying camels of Islam's 7th and 8th century fiction? Are rehashed fables and jinn worship really what you want to bet your eternal destiny on? Have you ever even read the Bible? Please join us in the Islam Christian Forum, the top link below this video, to discuss this subject and many others. The second link for the text version of the subject and a printable PDF tract. The third link for an introduction to the Gospel. The fourth link for papers on this and many other subjects by Dr. Rafa Damari from which much of the material for this video was taken. I would suggest that any Muslim that dares to read Dr. Damari's extremely well researched book, Salam in Light of History, will be able to overcome Muhammad's stand alone. 7th century religion. Please visit brotherpeat.com for much more.